Hey guys, what's up? It's Jeremy, and it's been a year since I started doing videos here on YouTube, and I can't believe how many of you actually watch my stuff, because I don't think it's that good, but it's definitely better than what I was uploading a year ago. In January of 2012, I uploaded my first video game review, that being of Rhythm Heaven for the Nintendo DS. And I thought, hey, why not re-review the game, because I don't think my videos are complete pieces of turds anymore. So, let's begin. Rhythm Heaven, or should I say Rhythm Tengoku Gold as it's called in Japan, is a sequel to the Japan exclusive Rhythm Tengoku for the Game Boy Advance. It's a series developed by the people who are responsible for the fantastic WarioWare games, and with a dev team like that behind it, you can rest assured that this game will both be extremely addicting and extremely wacky. The game is basically a minigame compilation of games based around keeping a beat. There are more simple minigames like Built to Scale where you follow the Do-Re-Mi rhythm, and there are more complex games like Lockstep where you have to change from tapping to a standard beat and then switching to its offbeat. The games are aligned in columns, and in each column there are five games, the first four being unlocked one after another each time you beat one. After you've beaten the first four games in that column, you can unlock a remix. These remixes play exactly how you would think. The remixes mash all four of those minigames together into one cohesive song. You'll have to stay on your toes the entire time so you know when to switch control styles and what beat to follow. It's really something special. The fact that these games are based entirely around rhythm makes it so that if you're really good at one of the games, you can probably play it without looking at the screen, after enough practice of course. However, if you don't have a very good sense of rhythm, then this game might be a bit of a challenge for you. If you find yourself entirely stuck on a game, you can head to the barista and they'll clear the game for you. If you manage to do really well in a game, you'll earn a superb. If it's your first time getting a superb on that game, you'll get a medal, which will unlock endless games and rhythm toys. If you get a superb on a minigame, then you can try for a perfect when that eventually shows up. You'll have three tries to get a perfect, and if you manage to do it, you'll unlock that game song in the sound test mode. While I don't find getting perfects to the music to be a huge incentive to improve your skills, I do think that trying for superbs to unlock more minigames is a good incentive to get better and better at the game. You play these minigames by turning the DS on its side, and tapping, sliding, or flicking when necessary on the touchscreen. While the control style is unique, and for the most part very responsive, on a rare occasion I found my flick not registering properly, which is kind of aggravating. Though it happens somewhat rarely, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, it's just something I thought I'd bring up. Also, when you're holding the system on its side, be careful not to accidentally pop the game out of the cartridge slot. And no worries, if you're left-handed, there's an option to change the control styles for your benefit. It can feel kind of uncomfortable at first to hold the system this way, and if you have somewhat larger hands, and you're playing on a smaller model of the DS, then it may take some getting used to, but placing it flat on a table works just as well. You can't have a rhythm game without music. Well, I'm sure you could in some way, I, I don't know. But my point is, Rhythm Heaven has a fantastic soundtrack. Each song in the game fits the minigame it's paired with. Some of the tracks even contain vocals. And while some of those lyrics are a bit cheesy, they have this charm to them that makes the game even better. In terms of presentation, Rhythm Heaven doesn't really push the Nintendo DS to its limits, but that wasn't really the point. The graphical style chosen for this game varies. Some of the games have a cartoony look to them, definitely drawing inspiration from the WarioWare games, while others use 3D models that I'm not really a big fan of. While the rather blocky 3D models sort of fit into the whole simple and wacky feels of the game, I kind of felt they were a little out of place. Each minigame, being as unique as they are, are somehow able to tell a little story. The introductions in the practice mode, as well as the little level completed or failed screens, help give Give what may seem like just a regular minigame some sort of little story that I think is pretty cool. When you manage to complete the first six remixes, which is what I consider beating the game, you're greeted with the credit sequence, which is actually another minigame. While you can't play it the first time around, you can go back when it's done to replay it. After that, you have the option to try and complete the sequels to the minigames. These usually end up being slight changes or additions to the original minigames that are pretty fun to play. If you want to complete the game 100%, then go for these. I give Rhythm Heaven an 8.5 out of 10. It's a great game, it's one of my favorites on the Nintendo DS, but if you can't keep a beat, then it may not have the same appeal to you. Although, I do really suggest you give it a go and try it out first. Anyway guys, thank you so much for sticking around with me for an entire year, whether you started watching me in the very beginning or maybe today you're a new viewer. I appreciate all of you the exact same and I'm thankful for all of you being here. You've helped turn what was originally just a crappy hobby of me doing videos in front of a webcam each week into something amazing where the highlight of my week is getting feedback from you guys on 
stuff I can improve on, whether you like the video, and the occasional Jimmy Please Die I Hate You comments, they're expected from time to time. My last video was Pokemon Weird Facts and Trivia Episode 8, and this link will take you right to that video. Episode 9 is in the works, I know a lot of you have been asking about it, and I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a few weeks. I've been a bit busy. If you want to know when new videos are in the works, then you should definitely check out my Facebook and Twitter. Links to them are down below in the description. I want to thank TV Sonic Gaming, Balrog the Master, Did You Know Gaming, Young Town, Cat Icarus, Brutal Moose, Kira the Hedgehog, The Completionist, Munching Orange. There's just so many people I have to thank. So many people have been very supportive and believed in my videos this past year, and I want to thank them so much for all the help and support. And I think that's about it for today, so thank you all for watching, stay tuned for future videos, and I will see you all next time with more videos.